lovely people. So today is Sunday. I've just cut out a Nina Lee uh, Southbank sweater and I'm using fabric that I bought last year. And I think I do have a vlog of the purchase I made um, for that fabric, which was from First Star Fabrics with the intention of doing the Southbank sweater. And I've just cut it out and I've got some left. And I think I'm gonna try and squeeze out a Sew House seven toaster sweater. So I'm just looking at the pieces and I think I might be able to squeeze it out. I might not be able to do pattern matching. I just thought I would um, film me making it. So anyway, I'm gonna get on with just cutting out the pieces. And the front bodice piece, I am pattern matching that one to be like this one. I should have said that this is a toaster sweater I've got on now. And I want to try and pattern match so we've got one of these um, thicker cable sort of uh, patterns down the centre. Um, and I'm going to see what I can do with the rest. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pattern match any of the other bits. So it may be a little bit random. So I'll get on and start cutting it out. So I have my um, bodice pieces here, I've got the front bodice and then we've got the back bodice and I'm just looking at the instructions. The first step is just to take the right sides together of um, a sleeve and attach it to the front bodice. Okay, so we have both sleeves um, attached to that front bodice. I've just pinned them all the way down, matching the notches, matching the edges. And then I'm going to take that up to the machine and stitch it up. So I'm using a stretch stitch on my machine, which is just a regular zigzag stitch at a width of 1.5 and the stitch length of 2.5. And I find that lots better for me to actually sew on the sewing machine as opposed to the overlocker. So if you're like me and you're a bit nervous about the overlocker or you don't have the overlocker, you can just sew this on the machine. So I haven't really got any um, thread that matches this fabric, but it's not spot on. So I'm just going with something that's kind of similar and I think it'll be probably fine. It's a, it's a kind of like a deep red colour, which is not really what this is, is more of a berry colour but I don't think you're going to notice so I'm just going to stitch this up now So I've gone ahead and stitched um, those parts, the bodice to the sleeve, and I've gone ahead and overlocked the inside. Again, you don't have to do this. Um, you could just use a zigzag stitch. And I've used a thread that's very similar color, just on the top. Um, I only have black mainly, or white, so it's just um, black underneath, and I've just used a similar colour to the on the top or upper looper so it just looks a little bit nicer and then for the next part of this is to attach the sleeves to the back bodice okay so I've just again pinned the back 
bodice to the sleeves so um, you'll see you have your neck there and I'm just going to go ahead again and stitch this on the machine. Okay, so it's now um, a completely different day. It's now um, a Thursday. I started this on Sunday and I've just not had any time to get this finished. So I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. I'm just so distracted. And if anyone else finds this, that you find that some days you just can't focus on anything. And I've had that this week. I've been so tired again. <laughs> And I've not been able to keep my mind focused on anything more than five minutes. So I've not really achieved much this week, but I'm back today to finish off this uh, Sew House 7 toaster sweater. So we'll get on and you'll be able to see where I am at. So you'll be able to see, hopefully, in the camera angle. I'm trying to get the camera angle right um, so you can see this. Um, I have got my bodice pieces attached to the sleeves and I have overlocked the insides. I've not trimmed anything away just in case um, because I am doing a slightly different size this time from what I've done previously. I've not done any top stitching so the next stage for this is to get on and do the neckband. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so we're going to get in the bodice. And we'll attach this to the neckline. So we're taking this uh, right sides together and taking the back seam, the seam that you have on the neck, onto the back of the neck at the centre point. And so when you're cutting out, you can just make sure that you put a little notch in for your centre back. So you know where your seam's got to sit. Just making sure all the edges line up. Okay, so that's all pinned in, and now I'm going to um, base that on the machine or tack it on the machine. Um, I always base my necklines in just to make sure that it's okay to start with. Um, but this doesn't take any stretching in really, everything just meets up because this neckband is quite loose turtleneck um, neckband. So it just makes it a little bit easier when you haven't got a stretch in. So I'll go to the machine and tack that in. Okay, so I've basted in the neck and you can see it's looking okay. Um, I wasn't really concerned with my pattern matching, but I have got the, um, the centre pattern matching. I don't know if you can see that. Just about matching, which is fine for me. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so then I'll, all I've got to do is actually stitch that in properly because it's fitting fine. There's no pleats or any dodgy bits um, that I'm not happy with. So I'm just gonna stitch that properly. Okay, so I've stitched that in and then I have overlocked the edge all the way around on the neck. Like I say, I always stitch mine first and then overlock the edges afterwards because I'm not that confident with my overlocker. I'm not that convinced where the seam allowance lies on my overlocker, so I don't wanna over chop anything off. Um, so yeah, that's going to get pressed down towards the body of the top and I'll just press that and then go on to the next stage which I think is stitching up the side seams. <laughs>
also sewn up my side seams and I've overlocked the edges and pressed the seams towards the back of the garment and the next stage for this now is to um, make the cuffs so I'm going to get on with making the cuffs We've just got to attach these now to the sleeves. Okay, so there I have my sleeve with the right sides out. I have my cuff with the folded edge at the top by my fingers. And I'm going to slot that over so it just fits over the top until the seams match. So you want your seam on the sleeve to match the sleeve of the cuff. Just making sure that your seam allowance is pointing in the right direction. And then just pinning it all the way around, matching that notch that's on the other side. are matching on the very edges of the seams and my pattern is pretty much matching up so I'm really happy with that both of them look really nice so now all I need to do is add on to add the bottom band on to the base and then it's just finishing it off really now <laughs> I have finished my toaster sweater and I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. I really, really love the colour. Now you're kind of probably not going to be able to see the colour very well on the screen because it's gone dark now, but I will put some shots of me wearing it in this. And also you'll see probably pictures of this again in the end of the month on my, in my February makes. Um, but yeah, I really, really love it. I actually made a different size this time, so I made a small last time, but this time I've chosen to do an extra small on the neck and the shoulders and the chest and then grade to a small. So you'll see it's um, got its bottom band on now and all the fabric, all, sorry, all the pattern matches just about. And I've got my cuffs on. Again, I love the cuffs on this. Fantastic cuffs and I love the neck on it. Um, yeah, so it's all finished. It doesn't take very long at all to make this at all. So I know I started it Sunday and then got distracted, um, but you probably could do this in a couple of hours um, or even a day. For me, it's usually about a day because I faff about so much. So, you know, <laughs> it takes me a bit, bit longer than probably most. But yeah, I really, really love it. I'm definitely happy that I've managed to get this out of the Nina Lee uh, Southbank sweater fabric that I had. Um, 
So I've had to, I've been able to get two garments cut out and all of that fabric is gone now. So that's perfect. I hate having waste left over. So my scraps can just go into my closet core poof. Um, yeah, so apart from that, there's nothing else I could say about it other than that I didn't shorten the bodice. I have shortened the sleeves. For me, they're a little bit long. So I think I took off about an inch and a half off the actual sleeve. The cuff is exactly the same. Um, and yeah, it's really, you know, comes together really quickly. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that today. And I really think that it's worth giving this pattern a go. It's um, really, really quick and easy. And you, the end result is amazing, it's snuggly and warm. There's a reason why it's quite a popular pattern. And yeah, the fabric itself, um, this cable knit, um, again, a really classic fabric that you, you've probably seen stacks of um, nearly Southbank sweaters and toasters in this fabric, but it is a really, really nice fabric. I got this from First of Fabrics last year. Um, I'm not sure whether they still have it in stock, but it's worth checking it out to see if they do. Um, but yeah, I hope you're getting some sewing done as well and sending you all loads of love as always and take care of yourselves. Bye bye.